Hey, you. Yeah, you. You ever feel like it's getting to be a little too much? Too much pressure? Too many problems? Too many people? Maybe it's not you that's wrong. Maybe it's them. Maybe there's just too many of them. Well, you're not a problem, right? You're an answer. The final answer. You could change all this. Just load that disk it up. Open those files. Read about those rats. That's right. Rats. That's what they are, isn't it? Scurrying little mammals. Stuck in a pot with nowhere else to go. Round and round they go. You might be a rat too. But you're not going to be just any rat. No. You're going to be the chosen rat. The best rat. The rat that knows not to go around and around. You're going to find a new path. The path through the bastards. <laughs> just go into the subway. Find the midnight meat train. And we'll do the rest. Open up. Open your mind. And then open their throats. You are the engineer of humanity's downfall. You are the engineer of humanity's salvation. You are the culling that will save them from their worst possible threat. Themselves. 1995's Anatomia Extinction is an extremely competent body horror from Japan's Yoshihiro Nishimura. The guy behind or ahead of Meatball Machine, Tokyo Gore Police, and a slew of other video new type nasties. Anatomia was the first movie to demonstrate his style, which clearly is something that grew in the glowing, fleshy footprints of Cronenberg's Videodrome, and then was carried up into the air on radioactive metal flakes that shook off from Tsukamoto's Tetsuo, the Iron Man. Anatomia features nearly the exact same visuals and story elements from those films, but the movie is saved from being a mere carbon copy of those films by the grace of its excellent projected red and blue cinematography, a refined and peaked Tokyo cyberpunk aesthetic, and unique touches like strangely dressed hobos that you aren't quite sure of the gender of. Anatomia is not original, but it is improved. It adds its own voice to a clarion call that only rings louder upon modern viewings in today's time. One of my favorite things about Anatomia Extinction is that it's much more direct than Videodrome and especially Tetsuo the Iron Man with what it means. One of those weirdo mutants in the subway in the movie talks to the main character about his purpose in life. He is to address the overpopulation problem in Japan. The Japan shown here in the film is overbloated, stuffed with people. There are reports read over the air in the film that constantly talk about the population levels being at 100%, 110%, 120% of capacity. People were dying in the streets and nobody cares. That's how bad it is. The subway mutant calls this a rat problem, rats being the people all around the main character. However, the main character is also called a rat, but a special rat, the chosen rat. The mutant on the subway, the reporter lady on the TV that may or may not be saying what the guy thinks he's saying, and eventually it doesn't matter because the TV itself turns into a person. All of these characters tell the main character he is a solution to the population problem. He has to go out and kill as many humans as possible to win what are called points in some giant game of save humanity. By killing humanity, do I have that right? Well, anyway, crazy as it is, it is better explained than the movies that it is referencing. So, why does the movie use the term rat? At one point, the engineer reads some sort of ancient murder Wikipedia on a diskette, and he learns about experiments of rats. You watch him go through the entire menu and read about this. And what's neat about it is that these are real experiments that really happened in the 1950s and the 1960s. They're behavioral sync experiments, also called the rat utopia experiments. These experiments showed that most societal problems like rape and violence, in their opinion, occurred when you had too many rats in one area. They could put a population of rats into a vat, add in unlimited food, unlimited water, all the stuff rats need to be happy and flourish and populate the area. Well, they'd grow in population until the area was just filled with rats. And at a certain threshold, the rats were miserable. They stopped seeking mates. They would abandon their children. It got pretty dark. The rat utopia would collapse on itself, kind of like a body with cancer. 
Wouldn't one solution in that situation be to cull the population down to manageable levels? Personally, I don't agree with these Malthusian ideas. So the Rat Utopia experiments are too exact, too controlled, too limited to be applied as a reasoning for our real life, between me and you. But Anantobia isn't about a normal person. It's about a serial killer. And maybe these things that he sees are happening, and maybe they aren't. I don't know, has a TV ever turned into a person and told you to kill people? Hasn't happened to me lately, so I can't say that it's real. But it makes sense in the movie's logic as a plot device. Going on a massacre is exactly what a crushed, crazed person would probably do. It's apparently what some rats do when they're stuck in a cage, right? Is this real for him, or is this what an insane person sees on their way out of our world? That's for you to decide, and the movie's done a beautiful job of presenting this question to you. Is it you, or is it them that's wrong? Either way, it's a hell of a ride. I give Anatomia Extinction 5 Murder and Rat Experiment Wikipedia's on a disc out of 5. All hail the new flesh. All of these things are designed to frighten a monkey.